Are we live? Yes. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Digital Futures tutorial session. Today we have a very interesting session on uh, custom components in Grasshopper using Python. Before we begin today's session, I would like to introduce also to some of the previous sessions that we had and a very successful session on, on Rhino World, Paneling Tools, Creative AI, and Rhino 3D Modeling. You can check out these tutorials on our uh, YouTube channel. Also, today we're going to have a very interesting session on uh, Jill Deleuze, uh, which will be uh, hosted by uh, Digital Futures and FIU. Uh, we will be having Helen Fr uh, Frico coming in for, our, uh, for this session and she'll be joining us from Australia. Hence, the session will be held on Saturday, November 20th at 8 p.m. EST instead of our earlier sessions which used to happen on Sunday. The previous session also included some very interesting discussions on uh, uh, Michael Foucault, uh, John Ballard, and uh, Walter Benjamin. You can check out the session on our uh, YouTube channel as well. Next week, we will have a very interesting session on, uh, uh, on Peruvian architects who would be discussing the idea of architecture and memory placed in the context of the city of Lima. Without further ado, uh, I would like to now start with this session and I will welcome uh, uh, Mohammed Beju, who is going to be uh, the instructor for this session. A small introduction for him. He has done his Masters of Science in Computational Design from University of Tehran. His main research topic is AI in architecture design processes automating the procedure and generating novel forms. Mohammed Beju has a unique academic background and experience in architecture design, computational design, and AI. He ran workshops on AI and computational design, both in English and Farsi. He is Digital Futures uh, Regional Manager for Iran, and he will be also hosting sessions on Digital Futures Farsi field. Mohammed, the screen is yours now. Uh, thank you, Bablin, and thank you, uh, Digital Futures team. So uh, we are going to have a session on Python and Grasshopper and how to use Python inside Grasshopper, how to develop some cu custom components based on our needs, because uh, sometimes Grasshopper is uh, really set some, uh, is really uh, limiting our creativity. So and let's uh let's begin it let's begin with what is python and this question that python is a programming language and uh, we use python to to run a series of commands that we call them scripts so uh, these scripts are some kind of generally uh some kinds of commands that we give computers so the computers will be, be able to run the command uh, the script and do something for us. Uh, Python is easy to learn in comparison to, uh, with the languages like C Sharp or uh, C or Java or some other, uh, some types of uh, languages like that. So uh, you know that uh, the command and the script is going to be executed uh, one line at a time. So uh, it is very easy to understand. Uh, the syntax is really simple to understand Python uh, and also it is uh, semantically dynamic, which allows uh, the syntax to be less restrictive and less formal uh, when uh, using declarations and variable types. Um, so we may use Python to automate some repetitive tasks or perform some tasks in this case, uh, in Rhino or Grasshopper that uh, we do not have uh, access to the standard set of commands in Rhino uh, or Grasshopper components, or uh, when we want to do some generative design through using algorithms, um, or when, uh, and when we don't want to limit ourselves to uh, Grasshopper because Grasshopper uh, sometimes uh, sets some limits to our creativity. So, 
And why we use Python and why it is necessary to learn Python? Um, because uh, we can use uh, we can use it and we can run Python in Windows and Mac OS, for example, operate uh, those operating system and even Linux. Uh, so if we have Python scripts, we can run it on both uh, on different uh, operating systems. In uh, so, but besides that, uh, and more importantly. Python is very popular outside of Grasshopper and Rhino. So whatever you learn, uh, the, uh, it can be applied in, in many other fields. So, uh, but Rhino already has some scripting language that is called Rhino script. So why we should use uh, or learn a new language that is Python? Um, let me say that uh, a script, uh, a scripting in Python is uh, uh, more flexible than a scripting in Rhino. Uh, so, uh, and Rhino script is not going to be supported on uh, multiple operating systems. Um, so there are uh, really uh, various uh, reasons to use Python. And uh, we can use Python in Rhino in many different ways like uh, interactive scripts or creating custom components or custom commands as we are going to do today and uh, creating uh, new plugins and components, reading and writing customized, uh, customized formats sometimes and so many other things. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you are creative enough, you will, uh, you will have no limit in using Python. And let's, uh, start with uh, some basic of Python and Grasshopper. Let me share my screen. Okay. So can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, we can. Yes. Yeah, we okay. Can. So you know that uh, Grasshopper is going to, uh, is executing and is running in parallel with uh, Rhino. So uh, may, uh, we can call it, uh, a parallel software or plugin, something like that. But some uh, some people uh, call it a visual programming language, but it is not a real programming la language. So we are not going uh, to discuss that. Uh, so uh, because the workflow and the direction of the Grasshopper is like this way. So we are putting our uh, Grasshopper uh, window on the left side as this, and the Rhino window on the right side of the screen. And uh, after that, and this is uh, what we call, uh, the, what we see here in this part uh, is called canvas in uh, Grasshopper or the work area. And this, uh, this part is the components tab. As you can see, we have some other tabs here that we can go through each one of them. And uh, until, yeah, until the display tab. So it is the initial tabs of Grasshopper. And we have two kinds of uh, things in Grasshopper. Something that we call it a container as this, uh, as this one, this is a point container. And sometimes we have other things like components that they are going to generate something or doing some operations on our data. So for example, but uh, the containers are not going to do anything. They just, uh, they are like placeholder, placeholders. They just contain some data and they hold the data for us. For example, if I want to, uh, in this case, set a point, I just right click on the uh, container, the point container and click set one point and set a point in Rhino environment. And this is it. If you have a point already in Rhino environment as this, I can just uh, clear the values and set one point and that's it. The point is uh, selected. So we have uh, the data of the point stored in this uh, container. So uh, this is a container. And for example, let me say, uh, this is a component. So it is going to do something 
uh, based uh, on the data we are uh, giving it. And sometimes we have some uh, plugins. The plugins are like a set of uh, components that a developer or a group of developers uh, have published. So for example, in this case, uh, Mesh Edit or Mesh Plus. Yeah, Mesh Plus is a plugin. So um, let's, uh, for example, let's, uh, if, what if we have two uh, points and we want to draw a line between them? We can just uh, select the points and have the line. If you double click on the canvas, a search, a search box will show up and you can type line. This line is a container and this line is a component. So this line we want, this is what we want. And it's, uh, this, uh, this input is a start point and this is the end point. We can just connect the wires of the containers and a line will show up in this case. So if I just move the point, the line is going to be updated based on the position and the coordinates of the points. So maybe another example uh, is like this. Um, maybe a circle. So if I type circle here, this is a container as we can see. And uh, we want a circle component. So we want this. It needs a plane and a radius. So the plane is going to be, for example, we can input uh, a point and based on the point, it will just interpret, uh, interpret it as a plane and the radius. And it needs a number, for example, four or five. And I can just extrude it. And this is it, so. Um, yeah, this is something that uh, may, uh, it is not uh, needed more to explain the basics of Grasshopper. So uh, for example, we can hide it by right clicking on this uh, or the middle click and click on this button. So let's just go to the Python. That's why we are here. And we can just double click on the canvas and type GH Python and hit enter. And the component is going to show up. Double clicking on the component in this case is going to show up the environment. And then we can write this, the script and we can start coding in Grasshopper and in Python. So for example, we need, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, start with variables in Python. So variables are something like this. Uh, for example, we have a variable, my var, for example, the name of the variable is my var in this case. And I am going to uh, set a value to it. For example, let's uh, start with integers and floats and integers. Uh, so what's it, what is float and what is an integer? Uh, an integer is a whole number like this. For example, my var, if my var is equal to five, it is an integer. The data type here is integer. As we can see, for example, uh, you know, uh, Grasshopper has some uh, data type hinting. In this case, you see there is a cross next to the star, uh, start point. And it, it says that it needs a point. The data type is point. And it will return a line. As you can see, there is a, a diagonal line in the icon. So uh, in Python, we have data types. The, uh, so integer and floats are some data types. Integers are whole numbers and floats are uh, numbers with decimals. Or for example, my integer, if I call it, my integer is five and my float 
is uh, 3.2, for example. This is a number with decimal points or floating number. Okay. Um, so another type of data in uh, Python, the built-in data types, we can have our custom uh, data types. We can create custom data types, but the built-in data types here are going to be something like this, uh, uh, strings uh, that are uh, some, uh, a set of uh, characters. So for example, my string, if I, uh, if the variable name is my string, for example, I call it my string and let's uh, do this. For a strings, we need to have quotation or double quotation in this case that I use. Uh, you can use quotation marks or double quotation marks. And inside the quotation marks, you can write anything. For example, my name is Mohammed. So, and my family, for example, maybe your string or maybe your name, your name is going to be, for example, David, maybe. So uh, be careful about uh, this underscore when you want to have a space in the naming in the variable names so you cannot just type my uh for example my string uh it will throw some error so instead of using spaces you just uh should use underscores so uh and we have another data type that we call it boolean Boolean types, uh, Boolean data types are just, uh, they can contain true or false values. They are binary and they can just uh, contain either false or true values. For example, my bool, the name of the variable and the value, value is going to be true or your bool, for example, false. So, and be careful about the case uh, case capitalization. For example, in this case, if I write true with uh, low, lower case, it is not going to highlight it. As you see here, it is highlighted. Let me just a little bit. Okay. Uh, as you see, true or false is highlighted. And as you see here, I placed a uh, hashtag in here, a tag, and this line is going to be uh, commented out. So it will be ignored. It, it is not going to be executed when we run our program. And so you see that uh, some highlighting in the environment, but what if I just write through with uh, T uh, in lowercase? So it is not going to be highlighted. So that is not what be called as a Boolean type and true, and the value is true. So um, another data type here, uh, or maybe another, uh, yeah, we have lists and dictionaries. So lists, lists are going to be recognized by a square bracket in this case, if we have a square brackets and a set of values and a set of objects in our list. Uh, so we are going to call it a list for, for example, one, two, three, four, five. And we just separate the values with a comma in this case, you know, in a list. And what is a dictionary? And for, let me call it my list and my dict. Okay. So dictionary is going to be recognized by a curly bracket uh, in this case. So, uh, but dictionaries are going to be a pair of values, a key and a value. So the key in this case, for example, A or maybe first key after that colon, and the value is going to be 10. So the value is 10. And we are separating the uh, first pair of the data with a comma, and after that second key, 
and for example, 12. So this is, this is a dictionary and this is a list. List and dictionaries can have all kinds of uh, data types inside them. They can contain uh, every kind of data types. For example, uh, my second list is going to be, for example, more my name, for example, um, a number or an integer, a floating point number, and a Boolean, a Boolean data type. So it can contain every kind of data type. And if uh, there is such things that we call it uh, list and Um, we call it indexing or list indexing in Python. For example, we want to access this uh, uh, this data, this number, number three, and we should be careful and be aware that indexing uh, starts from zero in Python. So, if I want to access this uh, this data, my list, I am going to call it my list, and in a uh, in a square bracket, I will type zero. And let me just put it in here. Maybe just, uh, okay, let's, uh, let me go to another set of uh, Python script so we are not going to be confused. So, for example, my list contains, uh, one, no, uh, some strings or some characters or some names in here. Uh, David, or I don't know, uh, other names, John. Okay, so I'm going to access uh, John. I want to access John. In this case, the string is going to be uh, zero, one, two the index starts from zero. So the index of Muhammad is zero and the index of David is one and the index of John is two. Uh, if I want to access each one of them, for example, David, I'm going to type one and print. So I'm going to test it. And in the output section, we see David. And what if I just type zero we are going to have Mohammed. And what if I just type two, we're going to have John. So uh, let's go on because we don't want to just uh, be a stock here. And, and not, uh, I want to show you a built-in function that we call print. We use print to, uh, to show the value or the result of some uh, operations or some uh, list, everything that can uh, be printed out in the console or the output section. For example, I want to print uh, the result of one plus two. So I, I just pre uh, hit test button and the result is going to be shown here, three. Or what if I want to have the result of two multiplied by three, and this is it, six. You see, this is it. If we have multiple prints, uh, so we have multiple outputs. And we have print, for example, uh, you can see that print is highlighted. It is, uh, the color is blue and it is highlighted. So we can uh, say that it is a built-in function uh, or, uh, yeah. Or maybe for example, 10 minus five and let's hit test. But if, we, uh, but if you don't want to hit a uh, test every time you want to run the program, you can just press F5 on your keyboard. So after that, we are going to have print, for example, 
uh, five or yeah, five. This is a floor division. This is what we call it a floor division, uh, two slashes. So let's just hit test and let me just delete this so we can just have this. So a flow, uh, it, uh, we have the floor division of five by three. And let me, so we can see that, uh, for example, if I want to have two by power of three, we can see that it is going to be eight. So um, let's go and have, uh, let's go and have some variables uh, from the outside of our uh, environment, our Python environment in here. Let me just, Okay, so for example, we want to print uh, x plus y, and we want to control the value of x and y by some slider in Grasshopper. So I'm going to just, uh, let me minimize it a little. Okay, so in this case, uh, Python component uh, needs to have some type hint. So in this case, we want to uh, add some numbers or some integers. So I'm going to type int here and choose int, int or short for int or integer, just this and integer for y. X and y are going to be integers. And we can control the values, for example, three and two we can control the variable like this. So you see that uh, um, the output is five. And if I change the value, it is going to be changed. The output is going to be changed. And let me have a panel here so we can uh, have the output in this section, as you can see. But what if, uh, for example, uh, let's say x, multiply by y and we change we can change the value and you can see that the value is going to be changed the value of the output so let's have another custom uh, another python uh, component and um let's uh we can control uh the we can control if a part of the code is going to be executed or not by using if statements. So in Python, we have some uh, control over the program. We can control the program. And for example, if, if is a reserved word, as you can see, it is highlighted. For example, if X is bigger than five, then, so we, we place a colon here and we hit enter, it is uh, equal to five spaces, as you can see, yeah? Or one tab, if you press just one tab. And so, uh, for example, uh, we want to have a conditional statement. If X or our input, in this case, our input can be X. So you can have multiple inputs. As you can see, you can add lots of them by clicking on this button, or you can just delete them. Okay, I'm going to set it as integer. And for example, let's have number seven in this case. So if X is uh, greater than five, for example, print an, uh, a string uh, X is greater than five and double quotation. Okay, so I can just test or press test or press F5 on my keyboard. And it is going to be shown here, as you can see, the output. Because seven uh, is the value of the X, of the input X, so you can see that seven is greater than five X because the value of X is seven and seven is greater than five. So 
this part of the code is going to be executed. But what if it was less than five? In this case, this part of the code is not going to be executed, you see? So what if we want to check if the value it is between some uh, other values? For example, uh, we have a if, and we, ha we want to have other conditional statements. So in this case, we, uh, there is a reserved word, elif. Uh, it is an abbreviation for else if. So elif x equals to five. This is, uh, this means that x is equal. You know, uh, in this case, for example, let's go here. And when we want to set a value to a variable, for example, my, variable we just hit one equal sign and we are going to assign a value to it for example three but when we say for example your variable double equal sign so for example four we mean by this if your variable or if your variable equals to four. So we are not setting it to four. We are checking uh, that if it is uh, four or not. So the result of this part, just this part is going to be a Boolean a data type, you know, because it is true if it, it is equal to four and it is false, it will be false if, uh, if it is uh, not equal to four. So. Let's be back to what we were talking. And for example, else if x equals to five, it means that if x equals to five, then uh, execute this part. So uh, print this part, this code block is going to be like this, x is equal to five. Okay, so I'm going to just, or, okay, um, if the value is five, you see X is equal to five. The output is this, what we have here. You see Python or the interpreter of Python is going to check whether if this uh, conditional statement is true or not. If it was true, it is going to run the code block after that. For example, we can have multiple code blocks, for example, print, I'm Mohammed or print hello. So we can have multiple lines of code in a code block. For example, if the value is this, and let me just say that it is. Okay. And here it is. Okay. So you see all the lines are executed and are shown in the output panel. But what if it isn't, uh, this part isn't true, this conditional part, this conditional statement isn't true. So it will ignore all the code block here, Python, and go to this part and just execute this uh, code block. For example, if the value of X is equal to five, you see, it is uh, going to be printed. So, okay. What if um, we want to have, for example, we want to check if X is uh, smaller than five and X is big, uh, bigger than zero. So this is another, uh, conditional statement. So you can see that if the other parts wasn't true, uh, the code here is going to be run, to be executed. Uh, so for example, print, uh, um, print x is between zero and five. And let's see, let me just press F5 
and I hit F5 and this is it. You see, X is, because X is uh, smaller than five and X is, we have two conditions here and we have and. When we use and, both conditions are, uh, should be, uh, they, they must be true. Uh, so the code block here is going to be executed. If one of them is true or one of them, uh, just one of them is true, the code block is not going to be executed. But what if uh, we use or, uh, or keyboard, this keyboard? Uh, in this case, if one of them was true, the code block here after the conditional statement is going to be wrong. So that's it. And what if uh, we want to have else? Else is, uh, is going to be executed the code block after else is going to be executed when the other parts of the code block or uh, if a statement is not true for example else print uh, x is a negative uh, number okay so i hit f5 and let me just Okay, so for example, if we have a negative number here and let's just test it, let me move the zoom controller here. Okay, so, and so uh, let me have it and test it. Okay, so um, else, um, let's uh, move on. And let's go to other part of the code here. And we have some other things in um, Python that we called it loops or for loops. We have, uh, let me say for loops and while loops. So in case of for loops, where, for example, if we have a for loop for, i in range 10. So what, what it is going to do is going to iterate uh, from zero until it reaches uh, a number before 10. In this case, uh, we are going to print the value of i so you can see what's going on. Let me, okay. So as you can see, uh, and uh, as I told you, uh, the indexing and numbering in Python is going to uh, it starts from zero. So it will count from zero until it reaches nine because we have 10 here and it will not reach uh, 10, a number before 10. So, and maybe we can use, uh, let's have another GH Python in here. So let's uh, use Rhino script syntax. This is a library that is developed by uh, McNeil Incorporation. So if you want to, uh, every library, when you want to use libraries in uh, programming languages, every library has a documentation. So uh, documentation is like a dictionary. So you don't, uh, memorize every word in a dictionary. You just uh, go and check for the word you want. So in a uh, case of programming, let me have it. Okay. Um, this, is the, this is the link for the, I'm going to send you in the chat box. This is the link for uh, Rhino script syntax library documentation. So we always look at the uh, Rhino script syntax documentation. For example, I want to uh, add a curve. Uh, I, I want to add curve. I can search in this search box, or I, I know that we, we, we want to have a curve. I'm going to curve and I'm going to click on add curve. So let me find it. Okay. Uh, and you can see that. Uh, we can, uh, it, it, it accepts uh, two um, inputs. So let's head to Python in Grasshopper and 
as you can see here, we can import a library by using the keyword import. Uh, and we can uh, write or type the name of that library, Rhino script uh, syntax. So, and we can uh, give it another name or make it an alias. So we don't have to type the full name. As you can see, this is a very long name, Rhino script syntax. We just have to uh, uh, use RS instead of Rhino script syntax by using as keyword. This keyword is a reserved word for importing uh, libraries. So RS, for example, a dot. And when I hit a dot on my keyboard, uh, a list of uh, methods and functions are going to show up, you can see here. But what I want here is uh, a curve, and I want to add a curve, for example. Um, let's say, for example, add curve, okay. And I hit enter and a parenthesis. So as you can see, what we have in our documentation here, uh, that is a description and the parameters and what the function returns and an example. So in this case, we have all of the information is going to show up here. You can see at curve accepts two kind of uh, two inputs. One, uh, the first one is points, a list of points or a single point. You can uh, give it or degree. So degree is going to be the degree of the curve as we can see in the description or the documentation of that uh, function. So let's go on. Um, for example, we have a for loop. Let me have for i in range uh, x. This is it. Uh, let's say that, for example, we want to have x as here an integer set it as an integer. So for i in range x, um, or maybe just a starting from a single point. Okay, rs dot add a point maybe. Okay, for example, I want to add point, add point. You can see that let's just, uh, we can have a, a single point uh, in uh, Python. For example, uh, let me, at point and it will suggest it. You, you, you can just hit enter after uh, what, uh, what is suggested is the correct uh, form of what you want. So add point is going to have some parameters. A parameter, uh, um, the, the inputs can be a point or be a list of uh, coordinations, uh, coordinates uh, like X, Y, and Z. So in the 3D dimensional coordinate system, you have x, y, and z. For example, uh, 0, 0, 0, it is going to be the origin of the coordinate system. And let's run it. And I, I, you see that we, we don't have anything here. So we need to just set it as an output here. For example, we have a as an output. After that, we can have the result here. You can see the result uh, in in here. So this is a point. And what if I want to have another point, for example, let's say B, and I'm going to add an, another output that is called B. And let's just copy this part so we don't have to write it from the beginning. And let's put it on the X10, if X was equal to 10. So you can see we have a point here. Let me just we have a point here, as you can see, and we have another point on this uh, part. Okay, so uh, what if we want to have, uh, for example, multiple points? Uh, like maybe a grid or a set of points. Um, okay, so uh, in that case, we want to initialize a list, for example, let's call the list A and initialize it by uh, just typing a bracket square. So 
uh, for example, for i in range 10 or x, x, uh, and let's uh, set it as integer, set x as integer, for i in range x, so we are going to have uh, some points uh, in a, a set of points. And for example, uh, point or maybe pt, point, okay, no, point, okay. Uh, it's going to be rs.add point and let's hit enter after that. Uh, let's have the value of i as our x, i, zero, zero, you see. And let's, uh, after that, we want a list of points. So we can append and add the values of each point that is going to be created here to this list by just appending, append the value of the point to our list. So, okay. And let's hit enter. Let me integer. Okay, we, we should just do it. Okay. As you can see, and uh, let me hide the outputs here and this part. Okay. As you can see, we have four points and we can just control the number of points in this case. So let's have a grid uh, of points. So we want a grid and a grid is a 2D uh, set of points. So we need two for loops, for example, for J in range Y and let's bring Y back again and let's set it as integer because range function in Python accepts only integers. So we are going to have integer and we should be careful about the type hints and data types in Python. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's have J values for our Y of the point. So let's just uh, hit it and add it in this case and test it again. So I J point. Um, so let me expect that an intent. Yeah, it should be intended because we are in the in our second for loop. You see, for each for loop, we should intend uh, the code block. So after that, the read of the points are going to show up in this case. So we can just uh, adjust the number of items or points in the uh, grid points. So we have, uh, I told you that uh, we have, uh, let me just delete it. We have while loops in Python. So while loops, are similar in some, somehow to for loops. Why loops and uh, why loops? They are going to be executed until the value reaches a limit. So we should be careful. We have to be careful about them because uh, if we don't update it appropriately, uh, the value is going to, uh, the while loop is going to be executed for forever. So it will be an infinite loop. Um, so let's uh, say we have an initial value, an initial statement that in this case, I call it i equals zero. And after that, I have a list. I initialized a list and while um, i, for example, let's set a limit so we can uh, rename it by this and let's set it to integer, for example, this, okay. Um, while I, while I is smaller than limit and maybe we can have a button for that. For example, 
uh, reset button. So a button is going to be a Boolean. So target. Okay. So we have toggle here and and reset. This is the reset equals to true. So if both conditions are uh, true, we are going to the code block is going to be executed. So a dot append. So the values are going to be added to our list. That we called it a and rs dot add point. Okay, uh, add point i uh, zero zero. Okay, and another setup. Okay, so and after that i plus equal or let's say i equals i plus one. This is uh, in this statement, we update the value of i by one. So uh, um, this is it. So let's run it and let's see, let me hide it so we can see and true. Let me set it to true. Okay, so you can see that we have uh, a control on if we want it to be executed or not, and if we want uh, what, um, how many points we want. So um, let me hide it and let's go to something else. So we have another um, library in Python that we called it mass. We are going to import mass. So as you can see, it is suggested by the GH Python. So, for example, the mass library are going to be useful in case if we want to, uh, for example, we want to do some operation on sinus, cosinus, those kinds of uh, mass operators. So, for example, let's print the value of mass dot uh, you can see that there is lots of functions in here. I want to use sinus, so press enter. And after that, I want to have the uh, result of sinus of the number pi, mass dot pi. If we want to have pi, the number pi, we should use mass, uh, mass library. If you, we want to have sinus, cosinus, tangent, those kinds of uh, mass operators, uh, we, we should import the mass uh, library. So let's see the value. As you can see, the sinus of pi is uh, this. Let me have it printed here. Okay. So, and let's uh, draw a line because we can just, uh, we can now draw a line. Uh, we cover the basics and let's go to some, uh, to have some geometry. Okay. Um, if you want to have a line, let me, for example, we, we, we need at least two points, the beginning of the line and the ending of the line. So uh, PT1 is going to be RS that, add point and for example let's put the point on the origin of the coordinate system so this this and this and pt2 or the end point let's say a start point so it start point end point okay rs dot add point and for example 10 10 and zero maybe so i'm going to append uh so we are going to have rs dot add line you can see this here if you want to have uh, a line let me okay for example i want to have a line 
and you can see it suggested that add line and if i click it we have a starting point and an ending point so rs dot add line a parenthesis and the start point as the first argument of the function for the start and end point for the second argument and we can run it nothing is going to show up because we are not returning the value so for i can just a dot append this so you can see that a dot append is going to uh, draw a line from zero to x equal 10 and y equal 10. So uh, if I hit, for example, 10 in here for the z, you can see that we have a three-dimensional geometry. So uh, let's just... Um, <clears throat> um let's uh let's head on to another example so we have our rhino script syntax imported and let's have three points maybe first point uh okay uh rs dot add point as um, let's copy the values let me just go back to our example and change uh, this into what i want to show you so okay i don't want a, a, a line anymore so i can just say for example i want a circle for example let's say circle circle is going to be rs dot add circle and as you can see it needs a plane and a radius so if i want to have uh, a circle i need to input a plane or the center of the circle and a radius and i can just uh, have this start point as the center and a radius radius i'm going to control it so let's say we have a circle because i want to have it as the output i just type circle so we can have it as the output so radius and in this case let me have radius and we can set it as floating number because radius uh most of the time we have uh decimal numbers for the radius so let me for example uh 5.4 and let's hit it and you can see that a, a circle is going to show up or what if i want to append let me just bring back the line rs dot add line so uh first and this one so let me say the circle okay i have i need another so we can have such things so let's go on and uh have more complicated and complex uh sorts of um geometries so let me have another gh python component uh this gh python component and um for example for i in range x we want to have a range function to have a set of numbers and we want another for loop so this is called a nested for loop a for, a for loop inside another uh for loop for j in range y and let's see for example uh, a we are going to return it as a in this case a um dot append uh or a equals i don't want to a equals rs dot add circle as you can see we are going to have a circle and we want a plane 
or a center or a point. You can see a point or a plane. I want to use a plane as the center of the circle. So I, uh, I use a list as the coordinates of the point. Uh, so for example, I, J and zero. And after that, comma and a radius, maybe another, uh, let me have x equal to integer, y to integer, and a radius. I'm going to add one to the radius because if we have a radius equal zero, it will throw uh, an error. So we don't want an error. Uh, so uh, it, it will make sure that uh, it will never be a zero value for the radius. So let me have a radius in this part and set it as for a floating number, okay? Two, four. Okay. okay. So we have this number here and we can move it as you can see, because we, we change the values of the center of the circle by X and Y. So you can see the values are going to be changed because we have four loops here and we have sliders and you can see we can change the values. So after that, um, let's, uh, uh, let's, uh, maybe, okay, let's, uh, for example, um, we, we can have a, a destination, for example, if, uh, for example, between points, if we have a grid and we want to justify the distances between each uh, point, between the rows and columns of the grid. So I, I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to have another GH Python and paste it. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so set it as integer. Type hinting is really important. And let's have a point. So let me just rename it to point. So the point is going to be returned. Point rs dot add point as we used as point uh, add point for creating some points. So let's have, uh, for example, a distance here. So we can just change the distances between them. This x load and this y as float. So as you can see, I'm going to have, uh, we have x, y, and z for the point. And if we multiply the distance by the value, we can just adjust uh, the distance between the rows and columns. For example, I equals this X and J this Y and zero. So we are going to have a 2D. So that's man type, okay. And let's, uh, give values to it, some values. And for example, one, two, five, one, two. And let's, uh, for int, uh, something is data access. Okay, so please be careful. Uh, when we have just one item, we set it as item access. When we have lists and when we have trees, because Grasshopper have uh, some kind of trees uh, and some passes. So be careful, sometimes it will throw some errors. So, as you can see, uh, let me have it. Um, 
I can just have it. And let's see if it is going to work correctly. Y and J. Um, okay, we have another grid point here, yeah? I'm not sure if it was here. Okay, this is it, okay. So I can change it to what I want. So let me just hide it and hide the other component so it is not going to show up the results. And this case, this case, okay. So this X and multiply this Y and this x, the distance of x, and let me sort them, this y as floats. So uh, let me non-type, yeah, okay. I should provide the value for the inputs. And after that, I can have it. As you can see, it is going to change uh, the distance between the rows and we can have it. And for example, this and this, and let's say one and one. So you can see, we can adjust the distances between the rows and columns and we can have however we want. So. Uh, let's hide it and let's go to other examples, other scripts. We have another script here. Um, so uh, maybe let's change it to some to have some circles. So, uh, for example, we have points here. Uh, let me say point and point okay so i'm going to have other outputs because i want uh, circles too beside uh, the points here let me show it okay beside it i want circle so some circles so i'm going to have something like uh, this um or maybe some cones, as you can say, maybe not circles, some cones. So uh, point, and let's append the point, and let's have, for example, cones. Okay, let's call them cones, and let's have the cones here append. Okay, rs dot add. Let me rs dot add cone. As you can see, we have cone in the R, uh, Rhino script syntax. So rs add cone in this case. So uh, the cone, what what cone wants is a base. It can be a point or a plane, as you can see by the documentation. And it needs a radius and height or a cap. So uh, we just need height and radius. So uh, let's say point, for each point, it is going to be created and height for the height of the cones and radius. So I'm going to add some other parameters here, as we can see, height, a floating number and radius, another floating number. So. Let's say this is it. And let's set it as that. So we have cones here and we want to have, uh, let's uh, just have them. Okay. Let me say line 10. So yeah, I have to place another thing. And let me 
just debug it in line nine. And let's say, uh, for example, let's call it, for example, B, for example, B. And let's see what, what's going to happen. RS.add point, we have point here, we have our points. And we have our, yeah, cap equals, I, I have not just did it. And convert it to a plane. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just uh, erase it. Maybe we can have circles first. So circle is going to be rs dot add circle in this case, and at circle we have point, and we have radius. Okay. So a dot append circle append. Okay, this is a typo here. Okay. Let's have append and circle, yeah. So we have these uh, circles here. So we can just adjust the values and let's say adjusting the values here and radius of the circles. And let's make uh, some, uh, some cones D dot append. Uh, rs dot add cone and point. That's it. Yeah, and have height. Let me hide and <clears throat> what is height in here? Yeah, it can be point or a number. So let's uh, maybe have it as a point. So as an attractor, maybe we can have an attractor point here. And let me just, uh, okay, we have a point. Let's have it in this case, in this case. Okay, so as you can see, let's set the point to this, okay? So it is set. And let's change the type hint to point 3D, okay? And we have height and we have radius. Radius, is it the same? Yeah. So radius and cap. So we can cap them or not. If we want to have cones capped and let's have another set of variable, let's call it cap and set it to Boolean. So Boolean is like this. And we can cap them or not. We can control whatever we want, you see? And let's add them. As you can see, all of the points, uh, sorry, all of the cones are going to be toward our point. So that's what it is going to do. And if we want them to be capped, as you can see, they are capped here. And if we want them not to be capped, so we can control all parts of uh, the geometry. And let's just uh, change it a little bit. So all of them are not going to be such things that are uh, intersecting to each other, intersecting with, with each other. So uh, we have point. And let's say that after point, we have point height for the height. We have a point height and let's add another point, rs.add point. And let's say, um, for example, let's copy this point and this here, height. Okay. And I can just uh, control the height by number, how to control it by a number in this case. Floating number, okay, height. Yeah, okay. So after that, um, let's see how it is going to be executed. Uh, let me say number 10.
um, point height. Yeah, we have point height here. I should. Yeah, and we can have the cones to be like this. So we can control the height of the points and we can have a grid of the cones based on that. So let's change it a little bit. So it will work uh, at the point, this point is going to be work as a, an attractor point. So let's change, uh, let's change this. And let me have it. So, so we want to have an attractor point in, in here, for example, this point as an attractor. So every kind of Every, uh, uh, every and each of our cones are going to change their radius and their height based on the, distan uh, the distance uh, from that point. So uh, let's uh, add another variable called the distance here, for example, distance rs.distance. So we have another function in Rhino script syntax that is called distance. So it will accept two points or a set of points. And I'm going to just uh, have it as point. Oh, add point, okay. Point, point is this point and an attractor, attractor. So uh, we want another, this point to be as an attractor. So let's uh, have it as an attractor. Attractor. So, and uh, let's have it as point 3D. So, can you see my Rhino screen? Because I it gave me a, an error. I'm not sure if you are uh, seeing my screen. Yeah, we can see the screen. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, let's. Attractor, let me check if the, okay. So we have a point 3D as an attractor and let's have uh, the point that we have uh, specified here as the point attractor point. So in this case, this is the attractor. Okay. So it will just, uh, the distance is going to uh, just, uh, return the value of the distance between our points that we are creating here and the attractor that we have specified here, you see? So we want to use this distance in order to change it, uh, to change the height and the radius of our cones parametrically. So we are going to have a, a distance factor because uh, sometimes the distance is going to be uh, bigger than what we want. Distance is going to be distance uh, factor, this factor, for example. And let's have this factor and set it as a floating number. So this is a floating number. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And have a value between uh, zero and one. So it will just, it will adjust uh, the distancing, not zero, of course. So <clears throat> uh, let's have a, a conditional statement to check uh, the distance, if the distance are going to be, uh, let me, no, cancel it. Uh, because sometimes the radius of the cones are going to be uh, too big so they are going to intersect with each other. So we want to prevent them from intersecting with each other. So we know that if the uh, if each one of the cones are uh, are going to be uh, their the radius, the radius of the cones are going to be half of the half half of the radius. So it, they will not intersect. So let's just check uh, and make sure that they are not going to intersect and we have distance here 
And if distance greater than this, for example, this x or yeah, this x here uh, divided by two and distance is going to be equal to this, uh, let's say this x divided by two. So it will be half of the uh, distance between each uh, row. So we have the point height here and uh, we have the cones here and circle, let's just, uh, let's just hit this button and let's make sure that it is working. Let's debug it. So I'm going to debug it and height distance j point height. So it is it b dot append rs dot add coin point and point height radius. Okay, so it is not going to be radius. It should be distance because we want to work with distance. And you see, and uh, let me just uh, comment them out so we can just see the cones here. So you can see if I change the value of it, for example, if I move here and you can see that, and this is it. So the distance factor is going to be like this. Let me just have a smaller distance factor and from a top view so you can see better. So you can see it will going to change the values of uh, the distance, the points and the radius of the coins based on the distance between the center of the cones and the, ra uh, the attractive point that we have here. So, um, so, uh, Let's uh, go and change the height of the cones based on the uh, distance from the attractor. Uh, we have point here. Let me check when uh, we can do it. And height, yeah, distance. OK, so we are going to have the height equals to distance. Let me check if there is no, yeah. So after that, we have distance by multiplied by a factor and distance. Uh, this is making sure that the distance is half the size of the grid. And point height, we have point height. We have point height, okay, distance, point height, height. And okay, uh, let's change it. As you can see, if I move the, point here, they are going to change. Let me, uh, you can see better, I think now. And in this case, the height of the cones are changing. So, so let's uh, have another, let me hide it. Let's have another, uh, um, let me have another script to work with circles, some circles. Okay. So we have Rhino script syntax imported here and we are going to import, let's, okay. We are going to import mass library. And after that, I'm going to have a list that I called it A. And after that, I'm going to have four. Uh, let me say that a radius, we want some circles to have some radiuses between uh, some uh, a set of numbers. So um, so radius start and integer set it as integer because we want to use range function and range function just accepts uh, integers. So radius end and set it as integer. Okay, so let's go 
to here for radius for every item or radius in range so you see when we, we use range function we can have just a single number so it will just uh, specify the ending of the range function or we can have two numbers so the start and the stop as you can see the start and the stop of uh, um, the range function and we can have three numbers a step a stop and a start so the step is going to be uh, the distance between each uh, and each one of the data points so <clears throat> uh, we can we have a radius start let me have radius start for range so it will start from the radius start number and the radius and it will end uh, at radius end number have this for loop and we are going to have some circles for example a dot append uh, rs dot we have some circles rs dot add circle and we want to have uh, a point at the center of the circle and radius for the circles so i'm going to have a list for the center of the circle x and y and uh let me know uh yeah from the start start and this is it and radius so what we are going to see here let me just have it five and 15 for example so we are seeing that we have circles that we can we have a set of circles that we can control when uh, where do they start and where they end so and let's change it a little bit so we every time as you can see we uh, we make our script a more complex so uh let's change this one um um for example let's have an x let me have an x here and a y and let's have uh let's set them as integers where is it okay integers and let's have a k as a factor k and we want it as a floating number so and let's say for example 10 or maybe more 12 and 12 or maybe more no not 21 14 is good 15 okay and let's say that we have and let's build this okay and we want to have the x and y as the uh, coordinates for our center points for example we want to change uh, and move the circles so let's uh, place them here x y and we want to make uh, something like a wave and we are going to use mass library dot sign and radius sign of the radius and the radius so let's see what it is going to do as you can see we are um as you can see we have a wave of circles let me create a surface out of them so you can see better so you can see that we have a, a surface let's uh adjust the magnitude of the lengths or the frequency of the waves in this case um so we know that if we multiply the sinus uh, the sign value uh it will uh, just um going to change a little bit for example in this case k we have it as a factor i'm going to multiply it by k as you can see it will bring more and more let me have a bigger numbers for example five 
until five, zero to five. And this is it. As you can see, we are changing the ma ma magnitude of the waves. And we are controlling, we have control over the magnitudes. So what if we want to have control over uh, the horizontal distances between them? So I'm going to uh, have a distance factor, for example, in this case, let me have a distance factor and set it as a floating number. Uh, so distance, I'm going to copy this and let's divide it, divide the radius, the result of the sine of the radius by distance. So that's it. And let me give it a value and you can see, you can see that it will just changing the distance between each wave. You see, each wave is going to have uh, bigger or smaller values. So um, <clears throat> let's, let's go and have something new, some, something novel. And let me hide it. No, let me hide it. Okay, let's bring another GH Python component and Okay, uh, <clears throat> if we want to have, for example, uh, let's for i in range uh, x, and let's say x, let me move it a little bit, okay? Integer and integer. Y and x as integer, so set them as integers, for example, 12, no. 12 and maybe for example, eight, seven, six, okay. Okay, so let me just bring it a little bit down and for, for J in range Y, we have a nested for loop, so, uh, so we are going to have a nested for loop. And let's say, for example, uh, we have a point and point is rs.add point. Okay, so I'm going to import, import ring right now, a script syntax as rs dot add point, okay? And let's have a point, let's have a grid of points, not a point, a grid of points based on the value of X and Y, I and J and zero. So let's just see what it is. And let's change it a little. Okay, uh, test it, okay. So as you can see, we have a simple grid of points, but we are going to change it a little bit. So we are going to make it a little more complicated. So with Python, in Python, you can check that if the variable that you are using are declared before. So if the variable was declared before, for example, how to check it, we say that, for example, p, if p, if the string p, it is a variable in globals. So globals are, is the thing that Python stores all the variables or all the reserved words in, inside that. So you can check it to see if a variable is declared before or not. So if p is glo in globals, so it means that if p is declared before, just change the value of p a little bit. But what if it was not uh, declared? So we just initialize the value uh, by zero, the value of p by zero. So how to use this p and this, uh, uh, this value inside our grid? And let's check, we want to have a grid that is just going up and down. And 
we can have this by using mass library and by using p because the sinus the sinus output interval is between uh, minus one to one so um, we have z as mass dot sine yeah oh i should import it so okay import mass uh, mass dot sign and the sign of uh, p so we are going to just input it by p and we are going to have the value of zero uh, z as our uh, z okay line 16 and uh, p okay so as you can see it is not changing but we want to have p as a time parameter we want to have uh, to uh, have our code and our geometry be changed based on the change in the time so how can we do this in other uh, in for example if you have rhino 6 you should type timer but timer is not going to show up in rhino 7 since they changed it to trigger the trigger component is like uh, the timer that we had in uh, earlier versions of Rhino. So uh, let me just set the interval of the timer to, for example, 20 and just change it. As you can see, it is, uh, let me, it is moving between minus one and one. And that's because the Z value is the sinus of the P value. So you can see it is changing a little bit. I can do it and you can see that it is changing the speed of the movement, but we don't want a lot of uh, increase in the speed of the movement. So just uh, 0 0.5 is good. So let me just pause it and um, let's, uh, let's change it a little bit. So again, we are changing our script a little bit and make it more complicated. So for example, we have, uh, for example, we have uh, we have point or PT here our RS dot add point a point we are going to have some some point and based on the value of X and Y. So let me just go to the perspective view. Okay, so we have this and <clears throat> we want a center center distance for example center this as i call it center this and we want to use the distance function of rhino script syntax so let me check the time oh. okay uh, and rs dot distance and we have the center of the circle for example uh, we want to have a center, uh, center at rack at ATR, and we have um, PT. So um, we have it here, we have it there, and let's have the Z mass dot Z is going to be mass dot sine and p plus center well, let's just let's just forget it maybe because we don't have time and i check the time let's go to more complicated cases and let's go to for example what if we have uh um for example let's say we have a floating point let's say this one let's have more complicated because we are short on time and i've noticed that we are short on time and yeah uh okay import mass let's have another import mass and let's have a value some values for i in range x and for j in 
range y. So a dot append rs dot at point, we want to have point, some points, and i, j, and mass sinus of, let's say, mass sinus of, for example, height. We are going to declare height, and let's have x, and let's have y, and height. Okay, height. And let's have it as floating point. And let's multiply it by mass dot sine dot uh, j multiplied by height. Okay, uh, mass dot sine, and let's have i multiplied by height, j multiplied by height, and distance. Okay, let me see that if we have appropriate parentheses. Okay, yeah, we have height and distance. Uh, I want distance. As you can see, I have floating number. So for example, 15 and 15, 1.2, maybe three. Okay. Okay, so let's run it and let's see. Let me have a little, uh, it's okay. So we are having uh, these things and let's look at it a more better. As you can see, we are creating a wave. Let's have a, maybe um, a delaying, delaying mesh out of points so you can understand it better as you can see and let me have it okay we have this and we can have some waves as you can see um, <clears throat> Let's just adjust the distances. And you can see we are having some distances. Okay, let's move on to more complex uh, so, uh, components. So um, we can have this, for example, we, we have this and let's change it maybe, let's, change the values here. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay. Um, so uh, we have this and we have range Y, RS add point, I, J, mass sinus, height, distance, amplitude, return, yeah. So we can add uh, a, another time parameter here. For example, if P, in globals, okay, P plus 0 0.1, else P equals zero. So uh, let's have this by, for example, um, Let's have this by maybe just adding the value of P to the sinus. Let me see what's the result number, glow balls. I, okay, glow balls. I think it is correct now. And we are going to see this and see this. As you can see, let's have a trigger component and let's um, interval of 20. You can see that it will change the height, but I'm not uh, constraining it. So it will go up and up forever. So 
you can just change it. Let me just uh, dis disable it so it will not. Uh, yeah, sure. It, it is going to be available for the later viewing and the recording, and it is uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so um, I have lots of things to say, but uh, we are really short on time. Let's go to have some paneling, maybe. Okay. Uh, let me have some paneling examples so you can see more complex examples because they are not some complex, they are some inter intermediate examples. Let's go to some more advanced, advanced examples. Okay, okay, thank you, Ahmed. So, okay, I can take my time, thank you. Um, let's uh, have, for example, uh, Let's go to another kind of uh, another uh, Python uh, Rhino library that is called Rhino and Geometry. Uh, the documentation of Rhino Geometry. Yeah, I will uh, save the files and share it uh, with you on GitHub and Discord. Sure. So. Um, Rhino Geometry is another library that we can use inside Grasshopper. So uh, we have, uh, let me show you that uh, you can see that the documentations of it are in this uh, part of the Rhino website. I'm going to send you in the chat, chat box the link. So, okay, this is the Rhino comment and in uh, underneath the rhino comment we see that rhino.geometry we can click on rhino.geometry and rhino geometry i believe it is more powerful and it can uh, be more helpful because it has lots of more functions and classes and property pro properties inside that so you can uh, just scroll through it or you can search here uh let me move the zoom controller so you can search here for example curve i'm going to just have curve and it will search uh, for the curve and you can see curve method lots of things that uh, going on here but you can just uh, go through the list on the left side and you can just uh, locate the curve class after that for example you want to uh, have the degree and get the, uh, the proper that property of the curve or you you want to create a curve for example uh, uh, you want to construct a, a curve and create a curve you can just go through this part and let's uh, go uh, to gh python and let's see what we can do as uh, we can do with rhino geometry so we want uh, to have some panels because we are going to have some paneling. Uh, some uh, we can we we will want to have some custom paneling component. For example, we want for i in uh, range x and for j in range y. Let's correct it. Okay, range yeah. And let me just uh, have it this way type hint as integer i'm not sure why rhino is slowing down okay um for that and this and um let's have for example uh u we have in surfaces we have u and v as the coordinate of the assist uh a surface they are like isocurves or the coordinates of the surface so we have u as for example i equal to x uh, sorry divided by x and v uh, j divided by y let's see uh, what if we have some uh, panels you can see that for example uh, we want to have some panel maybe surface initial surface and let's set it as surface where is it okay surface and for example 
let's create a surface in uh, is it here yeah let's create a surface inside rhino for example this one and this one okay and okay this and this and change them a little bit okay so loft okay this is a surface surface let me set this as a surface and let me just hide this so and let's reparameterize it and <clears throat> well maybe we can create it okay let's let's go on um we want four points for the surfaces you you see we want uh, four points for creating a surface out of the points we uh, we have point one as uh so we want to have initial let me just copy the name of the surface so it is very long name initial surface dot uh point at for example uh, let me uh just check it so we can have a surface or let me just uh do it okay let's just uh, have the sorry curves not this but this okay we have a surface here i'm going to okay so uh multiple curves and multiple curves okay and loft okay and let's have the that as this okay so we have a surface an initial surface and let's say that the point one the first point of the surface is going to be uh dot point at as you can see it will suggest there are, the python suggests the point at and i just hit enter and after that u and v not w yeah u okay and we have point two and we have uh let me just copy this we want to have uh the four corners of the surface as our points for example so okay um uh, let's uh and we can we want to have control you 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 know for example u plus uh um h lift up the horizontal line of lift up so we have to add some other uh things here let me add them so we can control them okay so i want to control it uh u plus h left up minus uh u uh, and divided by x it is like a formula so you don't have to i just uh play uh with the formula to find the best result so you don't uh have to worry about it and v left and up divided by v for example let me say v left up and set it as float okay i'm going to have for example one two five seven and let's just have the numbers here you don't worry about these numbers so um <clears throat> let's see uh, 
we have another point in this case. Um, we want to have point uh, right. We want to have another one because we need four corners. So let's say after that and that. Let me just copy this and place it here and rename it to right up. Okay, as a floating number and right up, we have the right up and um, let's just, uh, yeah, it's because it is X, uh, it should be Y and let's have point, it is point three and let's have point four and let's copy this so we don't have to write it from the beginning. Uh, U plus uh, H right down, H right up, H right down, okay, and H right down as a floating number, so okay. Uh, plus that minus U is uh, not necessary, and we have to have it like this, H left up. Let me just check it so we don't have any problem with the code because it is uh, going to be complicated. Uh, we write up, we write down. Okay. We, we have uh, V write down as a floating number. All of them are floats. So in this case, we have a panel uh, RG. I'm using the Rhino geometry library here. So we can have NERB's uh, surface. We want to create some surfaces, some create uh, from, uh, from corners because we have corners here and we have PT1, PT2, PT, PT3, PT4. Okay, and panels, let's append them. Let me just uh, make it a little bigger so we can, okay, panels. And we panels, append the panel to the panels list. Okay. And let's check if we have any problem with the code line five for i in range x and ah okay for i in range x so um yeah we have to put some uh, values inside them let me check uh, the values and let's see if it is going to work we write up, we write up, okay, we, oh, I didn't, um, we write up, we should have another variable here and set it to float, we write up, okay, test it and let's see what's going on here, so, uh, let me just uh, make them a little bit better because they are really uh, okay. <clears throat> so I just uh, have panels here because I want to have panels. I didn't return the panels. So after that, I'm going to uh, just uh, let me uh, show you what's going on here. So, and the initial surface is here. So, okay. And we have a surface. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, let's uh, 
have the panels here. So for example, uh, let me just check it. Uh, I and test it okay we have uh we write up and we write up yes we write up we have it here okay so that's it and we up right okay okay there is some typos here you can see we write up okay as you can see the panels are created let me just hide the initial panel so you can see the panels we have in this case and let's hide all the unnecessary parts and we have this yeah hide it okay so you can see that we have some uh custom panels that we can work with these uh tools here the, these sliders we can just adjust the distances or the uh, numbers of them by doing this or having this for example as you can see i i can i have control on all parts of it and this is it i can make it more complex but uh yeah i think I should go to the next example because it is more uh, important for us uh, to have that. I can make it more complex. So, you know, these parts are going to, in, they are intersecting with, with, each, with each other, but we can, uh, for example, we can have, uh, let me have uh, just create them. Uh, okay. So we just have to have some normals of the surface. Let me just, for example, normal and initial surface have the normal of the, no, initial surface that are normal at, where is it? Normal at, yeah. Uh, normal at and a U, V for this. And for all of them, we can just do it. We can have normal two, normal three, uh, normal four. So uh, let's see if uh, anything is okay with that. So after that, we have to just uh, add the points. Uh, we have to do some addition, uh, the points and the normal. So they are not going to intersect with each other. For example, point one, uh, equals uh, plus equals n1 so factor uh, let me back let's say we have some factors because we want to con have controls over that so um so point two factor two factor three factor four and n4 n3 n2 and point three, point four. Okay. Um, let's have some uh, factors after that. Let me not just run it. Okay. Uh, factor one, two, three, four. Okay. Factor one as a, uh, a floating number. Factor two, of course, a floating number. Factor three, another floating number. And factor four, another one. That's okay. There are going to be some 
a small numbers, for example. Okay, just do it. And you can just control them so they are not going to intersect and they are just going, if I just show you here, this is it. You, you see, they are not intersecting. They are over each other in this case. You can see that they are just over each other and they are not intersecting. I'm going to hide it and let's just disable them because Rhino is just uh, so sensitive. Okay. Um, maybe let's go to have uh, the thing that I, I wanted to show you how to create Lancet Vault and Koch Snowflake, but maybe a, a two hour session is not uh, appropriate for that because we are really short on time. But I want to have uh, some of uh, the most important part of our uh, tutorial. I, wa uh, uh, I wanted to show you that we ca how can we just subdivide meshes, the mesh spaces, how can we just have uh, the data out of meshes? How can we have some fractals? Uh, and but I'm going to uh, skip that part. So if I type uh, package manager in Rhino, as you can see, it, it will uh, show something. It is something uh, that they introduced uh, the uh, the MacNeil incorporations introduced in Rhino seven, and I have installed hops. You can. Uh, Uh, you can just uh, search hops and it will show hops for you and just install it. So uh, you can uh, have uh, some uh, better looking, uh, let me just uh, disable it, okay. Uh, you can have better looking and better uh, performance in your components uh, because uh, GH components, uh, GH Python components, they cannot compute in parallel. They, they don't have parallel computing. But when you use uh, hops, you can have that functionality and it will perform better. It will increase the uh, speed of the performance. So, uh, so after that, you have to uh, install, uh, you have to just go to command prompt, let me see if you can see it. You can see my screen. And you, you, uh, you can go to command prompt and you have uh, to type pip install gh uh, hops, gh hops server and flask. Uh, let me, flask. After you entered it, because I have installed these packages, I'm not going to hit enter. So if you if you did not uh, install it, uh, please install the GH Hub server and Flask. And after that, let me just uh, send it in the chat box. So uh, let's say, and uh, let's say. So uh, I will send you in the chat box. Okay. And after that, you have to pip install Rhino inside too, because uh, there is another library we are going to use. Uh, so uh, you can, let me, whatever you want, you can find on pi, pipi.org website. So it is the official uh, website for Python packages and libraries. And you can just, for example, uh, for Rhino Insight, uh, I have uh, noticed that some of you uh, have some problems with installing Rhino Insight. You can just go to pipi.org and hit uh, uh, and search for Rhino Insight in the search box here. And after that, it will show up. You have to just copy it and I'm going to send it to the chat box and just paste it to command prompt. Let me, command prompt and hit enter. It will install the packages for you without any uh, issue. So 
you have to uh, install, uh, you have to have the Visual Studio code installed. So Visual Studio code is some, Uh, so, Ali Rizzo, uh, did you uh, let's uh, let's continue after what I uh, what I want to tell you? I will come back and uh, just uh, check what's the problem with you, okay? Because we are very really short of our time. Thank you. So, after that, you have to install a Visual Studio Code. It is a notebook. So it is a fancy notebook, maybe. It is not an ID, uh, an integrated uh, development uh, environment, developing environment. It is just a, uh, a fancy uh, notebook that is developed by uh, Microsoft and released by Microsoft. So after that, you have to just, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have to name the file app.py. It's better to, uh, name it in this way. You can have uh, you can have it as a uh, as whatever you want. So uh, let's flask. Let's flask uh, from flask import flask. Uh, by this syntax, you just import some specific part of a library. So after that, I'm going to import gh hop server as you see as hs and i'm going to import mass for what i want to do and i'm going to import rhino inside so and you have to rhino inside dot load you have to load rhino inside uh, you know hops is a work in progress somehow maybe it is a uh, you will uh, you will face some errors so don't be afraid and don't worry because they are working on it and it is a working progress but it is very new and novel way of uh, creating components and it really offers some kinds of feature as uh, parallel computing that you cannot uh, have uh, in uh, simple python scripts that we were working on it so it's real uh, it is really a thing so uh, after that, we are going to import a system with a small, uh, with capitalized S and import Rhino, Rhino, yeah. So, and hops, they are the prerequisites. So you have to do this in order to, you know, Flask is uh, some kind of a middleware here. So you just connect your Visual Studio code with your Grasshopper and uh, Python in Grasshopper. And you know that uh, Python uh, in Grasshopper, we don't have uh, the Python itself. It's a subset of Python that they call it Iron Python. But in Hops, it's a real, um, you know, uh, don't, be a, uh, don't worry if you are confused because uh, the developers of uh, MacNeil told us that uh, the version they are using, uh, the Python version they are using for hops is Python nets. So, you know, it is uh, like, uh, it is a library for working with uh, .NET data inside Python. So the syntax is a little bit different with simple or the pure Python. So after that, we have hops as hs.hops, oh, hs dot hops and uh, app, let me app, uh, Rhino inside. Okay, let me. And we have to, this at sign uh, mark is going to show that we are going to use Python decorators. Python decorators are uh, something we are using here. So component, component, yeah. And this is it. So I'm going to have uh, the first. Uh, the first thing is the name or the rule. Sorry, the rule is some like uh, the URL that you are going to connect it to your Python script. So 
after that, wave. And let's say, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, let's disable it. Okay. And after that, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, and I'm going to name it, as you see, name is equal to wave. I'm going to have some uh, wave component. It's like a wave and a comma. So a description, you, we can have description, for example, creating a wave. And let's have comma here. And we are going to declare the inputs here. So because uh, um, in contrast with the GH Python we, we were working on, we should uh, declare the inputs here inside the script. So input, no, input here uh, is going to be a list of this hs.hops. It's the, just the syntax. You don't have to worry about the syntax, you know, uh, just follow me. And let me just hops integer. We want some integer as X, for example, and Y, the nickname, you see the name is X, the nickname is X, uh, a small X. So after that, I'm going to have a description. The description is, for example, number of points in X axis. So um, another hops integer, another integer input. So let me just have it and see what I'm doing. Okay, Y and small Y and um, number of points in y axis. So I'm going to have HS no, hops numbers number. So hops number is the float, is the equivalent to the float, what we called float in Python. So you see, it is a, a little bit different with what we were working on, but it is really powerful and you are going to see. And we are going to have height. Okay, and H and the description, for example, if we have we want to height of the wave and HS, maybe another number, hops number, you see using Visual Studio code or any other ID or notebook for your coding is really easy, is really easier than using uh, Python inside Grasshopper as we were using here. For example, I want to have, for example, in this case, rs.add uh, arc, for example. If I just delete some part of it, it is not going to, as you see, it is not going to suggest suggest something for us. We have to just go from the beginning and do this. So we have the suggestion. But uh, the Visual Studio code has lots of functionalities and features that is going to help us to be more productive. And I'm, I, I, I use Visual Studio code most of the time because it is really convenient and it is really uh, easy to use. So let's go on. And we want to have some, uh, amplitude for the wave and A, and let's say uh, amplitude of the wave, amplitude of the waves, okay? So after that, we want to have some outputs. And let's know, let's see what is, what is the output hops uh, surface, okay. We want to have a surface that is like a wave. So I'm going to declare and specify the kind of, you know, this is the type of the data that we are going to, uh, the, the script is going to return. So for us, 
and I'm going to name it as surface, surface, and the nickname is S, and the description is a surface made up of um, points, okay? And let's go to have our definition or our function. We should declare a function here. So as you can see, I'm going to name it as wave because this is wave here and this is this should be wave. It's better to have the same naming, but uh, it is not going to be a problem for you, but uh, may, uh, it's better to be consistent with that. And I'm going to have the inputs and height and amplitude okay this is the definition you can have a function you have you can have a custom function by just uh, typing def def after that the name of the function and in the parentheses the arguments that you are going to use it so to use them okay so uh we re you can remember that when we wanted to initialize a list we just type, for example, my list equals uh, my list equals uh, a square bracket, and we initialize a, a name to list. It is a name to list, but in hops, and in this case, we are using hops, and hops use Python net, so it is not uh, the pure Python. It is Python net. So we should declare our dictionaries and lists a little more different. It is not really something too uh, uh, freaky or too uh, scary. So points, we want to have a list of points. Let me, points, okay, no, points, okay. And system dot collections, as you can see, uh, that generic, no, with capitalized G, that generic, yeah, generic, no, generic, okay, dot, uh, uh, generic dot list, and after that, this, and we are going to uh, specify uh, the type of the, value geometry dot point 3d how do we know that we want to have uh we should use this because uh, i told you that we can go to this part for example rhino geometry inside the documentations and we can locate uh, pi, uh point 3d because we want a list of points and we have to you know we have to declare the data type of the point uh, of the list but uh, you remember that when uh, in simple python or in pure python a list was like this we we didn't uh, specify the type of the date, uh, data or the data type inside the list but in this case uh, we should uh, declare the data type so uh, and we can uh, we know that for example point 3d structure or point uh, point class uh, point class we have point class and we have point 3d you see and you see that uh, before point 3d we have rhino dot geometry and after that we have point 3d so we are going to use this rhino dot geometry dot point 3d as our data type for our list of points for i in range x so it is similar to what we were using before for j in range uh, y. And you see uh, that it has uh, some colors and some fancy things and you are going to uh, be more relaxed in and be more comfortable in working with uh, Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> so we are going to have point and rhino dot ge geometry so and point 3d you know we have point 3d because in this case you know we have point 3d 
So, uh, and we want to specify the coordinates float i. Let me just float i. Uh, because the point 3D class of Rhino geometry just accepts uh, floating numbers. So we should declare that the i, the value of i is a floating number. After that, a float j. And after that, uh, for example, we want to have a, a value, yeah? Uh, a, so, sorry, a wave. So we are going to use sinus and sinus i height, okay? And sinus uh, height uh, j j multiplied by height, yeah. Oh, where is it? Okay. So, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so. Um, we have the points and we are going to append, we use append to add the, uh, the items to a list, but in this case, we are going to use add, just simple add. It is really more convenient, you see. You see? So after that, we have the points, we have the list of the points here and we are going to uh, have a surface, surface, okay. Uh, a surface right now uh, that geometry um, that nerve surface we used it before you you see we use it in our paneling example so create from points. We have used it in here, you, you can see. And let me just go there, yeah. Nerve surface, and we are going to just have it and create from points because we have a list of points and we want to create a surface out of the points. So we have points and uh, X, Y, and X, Y. So, and Y, and X, and Y. So, it is like uh, X and Y. So, create from points. We can uh, see the documentation of that function in here. So, create from points. Yeah, this method. You can see create from points, it will return a nerve surface. And uh, the arguments of that method is a list of point, a point 3D list, and U count and V count and U degree and V degree. So we have uh, four uh, U and V inputs and a list of points. As you can see, this is the U and V and the points. So. And we are going to return the value, the value or the surface. In this case, we have a surface. So the function is going to uh, create a surface and we are going to return it. If we don't uh, return the surface, we don't see anything. So uh, after that, another piece of uh, a snippet code name, if name equals to, uh, main uh, hops dot start hops dot start uh, debug true. So don't pay attention to this part, but you have to write it. So it is not very important. So after that, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to run it by hitting this. So let me, the zoom controls are all, all over the place. Let me just uh, have it. As you can see, I'm just uh, going to stop it. And I'm going to terminal. You can just control and tilde. If you press control and tilde, it will going to show up. So 
uh, you can see here, uh, let me scroll a little bit and make it. Okay, so uh, go to the terminal port and uh, and before that, just save the uh, the script and save the program. So after that, go to this port, type Python and app dot pi. So hit enter. So let me Python. The term Python is not recognized as the name of. Uh, let let me just uh, have it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Python, yeah, yeah, of course. Let me Python. Yeah, thank you. There was a typo here, Python. Uh, app dot pi. So it will going to start hops and flask and uh, let me examples what cannot find icon file. Yeah, we have inputs different. So yes, you can see it starts on a local server that is called local host. But uh, if you copy this, sometimes it is not working. So it's better uh, to use a uh, Yeah, uh, it's better. You can see that I have, let me just do it again so you can see it. If I just enter this, uh, hit enter on this. So it is going to start a GH hop server and flask. So as a middleware, so it will connect Rhino and Visual Studio. If you copy this, sometimes, uh, you know, for example, if I go to this port and have a hops component and go to pass and paste it, and after that, a slash, and the URL here, you see the wave. I'm going to uh, type wave here, wave. You see, it is not working. But what's the problem here? Uh, you should just, uh, I'm going to send you in the chat box. Uh, you should use, uh, sorry, let me just send you in the chat box. Okay. If you use this, uh, let me back to Rhino. Okay. If you use this, uh, this part of, uh, this, just this part of script, instead of what we have here, you can see that wave and this. And you can see the script, the plugin is uh, created and we have X and a description underneath the X. Uh, so number of points in X axis that we have here, you see we have this and now we have this. And for example, in this four surface contains a collection of uh, surface and Let's just uh, test it, put it into test. So uh, we have height, a floating number. So we have a floating number for this and we have a floating number for amplitude. And let me say line 13. Let me go back to line 13. Um, Points, yeah. Uh, let me see what's the problem with the code. Let let me debug it. Okay. So let me start it from this. Uh, let me start it again. So. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So it is here. Uh, where is Rhino? Okay. And that's it. So, yeah. 
we, we see that this here is a surface that is created and it is really amazing. I like uh, using hops since it is really powerful and it's, it is really going to be the, uh, the future of uh, component, developing components. So, uh, uh, so you can see in here, for example, uh, in, in this part, if you have any icon, I don't have any icon, but if you had, if you have, so for example, just uh, specify the path to the icon and it will recognize it. And the icon in Grasshopper should be 20, uh, 24 by 24 pixels, uh, not uh, more than that. So uh, pay attention to that. And the icon is going to be show up instead of uh, this uh, icon of hops. I really like to uh, go on, so but the time is up, and I know that you have lots of questions. So let's just uh, start with the questions, maybe. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mohammed. That was that was some really good session, and a good uh, way to even end the session by doing the hops uh, that that was planned out. Uh, so I would now invite if any uh, any of the students on Zoom have any questions, or, or we have any questions from our YouTube audience. Um, uh, any uh, of the students who would like to unmute and ask the question. Um, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. That was amazing, Mohammed. Amazing. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Ahmed. Yeah. I believe we we need like um, a series of tutorials, not just one. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, two hours is really uh, short, and so I needed lots of time because I have prepared lots of codes and scripts for how to create. Uh, a special meshes and those uh, kinds of fractal, 3D fractal, such things. And I'm, uh, I, we were really short on time. I'm afraid I cannot just go through that. Yeah, we can I do think it. Maybe it will be, yeah. yeah, maybe it'll be a good uh, thing to even continue our discussions on GitHub and uh, other uh, channels that we have. Or maybe do another session sometime. Yeah. Yeah, maybe another session would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I would do that. So I, I have a question um, sure. regarding what we had today. If, uh, like, I'm a beginner and I'm intending to learn this kind of stuff. So it seems you used Python and then you moved to Visual Basic. Um, yeah. And between using like libraries on Python. Uh, so would you recommend, like, the beginners to start learning Python as Python and then move to Python in Grasshopper or just start looking for something on Python and Grasshopper directly? Uh, maybe it's better to just start with basics of Python. So uh, don't just deep dive into Python realm. Uh, if they just uh, study Python and basics of and fundamentals of Python, it's better for them. And after that, just going through uh, Python inside Grasshopper and in uh, creating uh, geometries with Python is a better uh, solution because uh, uh, people like us, architects or computational designers, uh, we, we, we really like to uh, see the results as a geometry. We are not some coders that just work with some scripts and we, we want to see the geometry as the result. So a, a basic understanding of Python is uh, essential. And after that, they can just move on and they can just uh, progress into using Python in Grasshopper. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And like other question, can we make it like more interactive than just coding uh, like um, it looks like you take um, like points and then you do some editing in Python or you take a surface and then you do some editing. So 
is there a way to integrate it more like with a script with a definition to put this input and take the outputs and do like other cycle um with the definitions or this may cause problems i don't know it looks like uh, so advanced when you went through went to visual basic like python was very easy to use very clear in grasshopper as there is a lot of libraries but when you went for visual basic everything become like i felt like so stupid <laughs> i felt like i'm so stupid <laughs> uh, so the point is um do you recommend we as like beginner users to integrate visual basic with python or just stick with one language um you know uh, because the hops is really new and they have announced it and released the hops uh, recently uh it is uh, really sometimes confusing because you need to specify uh, the list dictionaries all the uh libraries you have to import lots of uh, more uh libraries for example hops g server everything you have to import and sometimes it is going to be confusing but it is uh when you work and when you practice for a couple of times you will know and you will learn the ropes of it and it will be just as easy as simple python in grasshopper uh, that's just a uh, a more complicated syntax you know that is nothing uh yeah and you Maybe, can integrate yeah. everything uh, inside that you can automate it but uh, when you want uh, everyone when uh, any any per, anyone wants to uh, develop a component it's better to start with something small for example with uh, you see that how did i do it i just started with something small and i re, uh, and i just evolved it and make it more complicated to have more uh, data streams in uh, as incomes and inputs and we can just uh, process the uh, multiple streams of inputs so yeah okay that's perfect yeah thank you muhammad i'd like to clarify that using python is so helpful um, to shorten the time of computing the process i had like four plugins before developed four plugins for grasshopper but using like native grasshopper components but, but when converted these components into python the computing time was like um to the half or to one third something like this so yeah thank you sure thank you mohammed i think we have another question um yeah uh, so there uh, the student is asking in python gh you used p plus is it for simulation uh you know uh, it was just uh, some some variable to have uh, the time and the change of the time as you can see uh, uh let me no uh you you know i just used p as a factor of the time as the time goes on the p is going to uh, be uh, getting more and it will increase in the number so uh it will have some effects in the uh, in the values but uh, after that we use p uh, inside the sinus and uh, so we make sure that the interval the output interval is going to be uh, between minus 1 negative 1 and 1 always all the time andres do you want to ask your question would you like to ask your question to mohammed uh, yes, of uh, course. Uh, thank you, well, Mohammed, for your sure. presentation. I really enjoy it. I, for me, was new uh, this plugin hoops. So I am curious uh, if you want to share your component, how you can do it, or you can compile it as well, or you have to share your Visual Studio code. Uh, yeah, uh, you can just save the Python file, and you can just uh, share it with anyone you you want. But if you want to have a uh, native plugin, if we call it, you have to go to, uh, you have to work with Visual Studio and C Sharp. So that's another advanced topic and it is uh, really something else, you know. It is uh, like uh, using hops is like a fancy prototype of uh, Visual Studio and .NET uh, and C Sharp language. Uh, and it will, bring some features, some really useful and some fancy features like 
parallel computing and inputs and descriptions and icons. So uh, these things uh, are going uh, to be useful. But if you want to have a real plugin and a native plugin, maybe uh, you have to use uh, you have to use C Sharp and Visual Studio uh, IDE. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I got it. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you once again, uh, Mohammed. Um, just before we all uh, uh, leave, I would like to again uh, remind our audience for our session today on architecture and philosophy. Um, uh, please join us at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, uh, at 8 p.m. EST uh, for the session on general values. And uh, our upcoming session also uh, next Saturday will be from uh, architects from Peru and they will be discussing their works in the city of Lima. And the next session uh, for, uh, our, uh, for our tutorial session, Digital Futures tutorial, we'll have Andrea Rossi coming and discussing with us the, uh, the plugin Grasshopper Wasp. Uh, which is uh, which is becoming a very popular platform to uh, for discrete architecture, and uh, students who would like to have Mohammed uh, resolve their errors and doubts, uh, you can stay on uh, Zoom uh, after the live stream is done. We can uh, we can have you discuss your doubts with Mohammed directly. Thank you, everyone. Have a have a good weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Very happy to have me. Thank you. Thank you very much.